Hello everyone, this is Blake. I am back to do a vinyl related video. This time, um, been taking a little heat from some, some <laughs> vinyl community member or two. Uh, Blake, why don't you show some vinyl? This is the vinyl community. So, you actually will get to see a little bit of vinyl. Uh, anyway, as you can tell in the title here, uh, above me, the vinyl flat. So, I uh, recently got my hands on some really choice records um, that I want to show you soon, very soon. Um, got all excited, opened them up, and much to my dismay, they were warped. And um, so, having those warped records and having uh, two or three in my collection that were warped, but I just did not want to toss them because I thought one day, you know, I'll try... I'll try to flatten these things. And so the impetus uh, was was right there in front of me. Um, I had some nice material, but they were warped, and I needed to figure out how to get them flat so I, so I could play the material. And so I did some searching on the web, blah, blah, blah. All these homebrew methods involved ovens and glass, and uh, I even ran across the teacher's scientific experiment where he... Uh, did something similar, basically cooking vinyl out in the hot California sun. Um, but uh, as as his uh, results showed, it's it's not it's not terribly easy to do. Uh, it's not easy at all to do, really. Um, destroy vinyl, yes, very easy to do. But to to flatten a warp or a dish um, piece of vinyl, that that's that's tough to do well. So. Got online and I found this thing called the Vinyl Flat. And so I'm going to show you what I got. Um, ordered Vinyl Flat, um, both the, the, the device, which I'll show you soon, and uh, what um, the what John, the, the maker, manufacturer, seller, uh, entrepreneur, calls his groove bag, I, groove pouch. Groove pouch or groove bag. Well, I don't. I call it the the heat pad, the heat bag, because that's that's what it does. Uh, anyway, so I placed my order. Um, very well packed. A um, couple of boxes showed up just a few days later from Texas. Uh, very quick delivery. Packaged very very well. Um, kudos to the packaging um, and the smart use of the flat rate box because this beast is heavy. So, in the box, I've already taken it out, of course, um, you'll get some instructions, and, uh, let's see, oh, I'm going to slide this over, and just see you in a bit. Um, so, you get this bad boy, uh, so I'll take it apart, you get a, a uh, kind of a, a screw down knob for here, but since I got the bag, I really won't ever be needing this. You use that if you want to use this in, in your, your kitchen uh, oven. Uh, anyway, the vinyl flat <clears throat> is a really heavy, hefty <laughs> couple of slabs of metal. Uh, very, very simply designed, though, but, you know, as, as we all know, some of the best designs are the most simple. Uh, wing nut, um, which holds the top down and uh, a little washer there and you see under that you've got a couple of uh, I believe this to be felt it could be something else um, I'm going to assume that it's felt because it looks and feels like felt and then the bottom piece uh, and here's the the screw and the bottom you know no magic here uh, just a really nice simple design oh and in a bag a bag to, to put it in uh, for storage when you're not flattening or attempting to flatten your records. So um, that's what you get for the uh, the vinyl flat piece. I'm gonna put this uh, together and uh, and I'll show you what the the groove bag, the heated bag, looks like. So I'm gonna slide this over and I'll pull this out. So in the second package, you, you end up with essentially what looks like the same type of bag, um, but with a, 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 a heating uh, 
gizmo inside of it. It's it's also Velcro sealed like like the like the other bag over here that comes with the the vinyl flat device. Um, and then a power supply and and cord to to run the heating elements in here and then instructions on how to use the heating thing. So um, basically um uh, it's it's a simple a very simple idea you just pull this bad boy apart um take your take the record that you want to try to repair and i just happen to have a piece of i mean a really nice piece of uh music here and you flop that down oops now you have to uh, you you are strongly encouraged to clean have a very clean record before you do this um, like so flop this down tighten it up just you know just just to keep it together it doesn't have to be tight by any means because um, the weight of this I I'm going to uh, uh, this is probably Oh, I'm terrible at weight, but I'm going to say 12 or 15 pounds, maybe. Uh, could be a little more. I'm, I'm not really sure. Anyway, you take this then and slide it inside of your heated bag, you know, like so, inside, sealed, and you plug the bad boy up and let it do its thing. So, what does doing its thing mean? Well, that's where your uh, patience comes in. Now, if you just get the vinyl flat by itself without the heating pad, um, there there's a chart, yeah, chart here of different uh, brands and periods of vinyl releases, mainly in order of their weight in grams, and then you get a um, suggested amount of time in the oven, your kitchen oven, at 150 degrees. Um, Fahrenheit and then uh, your your cool off time uh, afterwards so um, but this is this is quite risky because most ovens won't won't maintain a good temperature or, or a, a, an, a, a, an average temperature at below like 200 degrees or 170 degrees is, is what my my kitchen oven can do um, so you have to kind of keep turning it on and off to try to maintain that 150. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that because you really can cook your your vinyl if if you're not paying attention. So I got the heating pad, and basically, from the instructions, it appears that um, its goal is to to keep a 140 degree uh, average temperature, and you just let this sit in there for. You know, start at four hours, then go to five if you if you need more, and six if you need more. Um, it really, it's based on uh, a, a lot of variables, but but most importantly, the 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 amount of warp or or dishing that you have, and also the the weight of the of the the record. And I've done I've done a couple of tests, um, and I'll show you one of the tests uh, on some some uh, mid 60s Atlantic uh, release releases and they are they are 150 grams and um, well let's cut to some video and you, you'll you'll see what uh, you see what I did so I'll be right back so I'm going to try to show you this with a different camera this is the wobble that I or the warp that I want to repair and I don't have my amplifier on but I'm just going to show you the the rise and fall of the the arm there and each time it rises up it bounces so let's see if we can get this fixed okay so that was that was video of before and uh, you saw <laughs> you saw that wobble there and and oh man in my tone arm I mean what I, what you could not see in that other camera was a little uh, portable uh, video camera kind of thing you couldn't see the 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 
the stylus and the cartridge like basically jump out of the groove every time uh, it hit that that large um, warp so uh, let's see what my first test looks like so I'll be right back after this video so this is Blake back checking out the record after a five hour um, flattening session with the uh, the heated bag the groove pad groove pouch I think it's called so most of the wobble is actually out um, I bet this is playable let's see what the needle looks like um, so definitely playable so I've got to say uh, my first test of the vinyl flat looks to be a pretty good success um, you know personally I would like to get that wobble out you know do a little bit more um, I guess uh, according to the instructions I need to add a little bit more time to get that wobble that final wobble out um, but uh, I gotta say my first impressions looks pretty good so I'll come back after um, after another flattening session and uh, we'll see what happens Wow, that was uh, that's a pretty good result, huh? So that was five hours. That was my first test, first time I'd ever tried. And uh, as you can tell from the video, quite a bit of the warp is out. Um, but like I said in the video, I want it flat, right? It did. It did this doesn't say vinyl almost flat. This says vinyl flat. And so. Uh, did a, a couple of quick uh, email exchanges with John. Um, very responsive. Uh, Apparently, I mean, uh, from all accounts, a very, very uh, responsive and, and uh, helpful gentleman uh, responded. He says, "Well, I'm conservative. Let's go six hours." And so I tried six hours, and we'll cut to some more video. Here's what happens after a six-hour test. So here I am back after a six hour uh, flattening try and uh, I've got the, the record on the, the turntable and as you can see, or maybe you can see, if I will quit wiggling here, this record is about as flat as you can ever believe that it would be. In fact, what you see wobbling there is not the record itself. It's actually the felt pad that's under that that, make, that it gives it that wobbly look. Right now, um, hold this still. You can see that that tone arm is barely, barely moving. Um, I gotta say, I can't, I can't imagine that this is gonna get any better than this. In fact. It's probably flatter than some of the other records that I had absolutely no concern about. Um, so, verdict? Fantastic. So, I'm going to do a couple of more records and see, uh, see how things work out. But right now, my first try, um, after my second attempt, excuse me, a six hour flattening session with the final flat and the groove bag I believe it's called the groove bag uh, the heating bag works very very well so that's that um, we'll uh, we'll go back out to regular video and I'll, I'll explain or we'll add this to that and hopefully there'll be some explanation but once again, I'm going to try to get this close. That is flat. Wow. Alright. I'll be back in just a second. Impressive, huh? Yeah. So, I've got to say that um, having taken a, a, a record that was doing this and you know I, I probably shouldn't have been putting my my cartridge and and stylus on that thing I, it's probably a damaging damaging uh, experience for for that stylus and for that cartridge but 
you know, you got to do what you got to do for the vinyl community, right? So, um, after going through that in the five hour and the six hour run, uh, you see, you see, and hopefully you could hear, uh, man, it, it works extremely well. And um, I did another, so I had another, uh, another warped record, pretty much the same, same level of, of warpness, you know, pretty bad. And uh, I just went straight to a six hour run uh, today, started it this morning and checked it out about an hour ago Whew. again flat flat I mean flat Whew. so I'm sold um, question came up earlier you know and in a concern that I had um, but but I, I think I've, I've like rationalized it in my head it, it, anyway and, and maybe those of you that have more experience can can comment below and, and let me know um, is this damaging the groove walls or, or anything like that with this much pressure and, and the heat and everything? And, and my speculation is that since we're not getting the temperature so high that the vinyl is melting or anything like that, um, we're just getting it warm enough to where it's, it's malleable and we can get it back into it's the shape that it needs to be. And because the, uh, the vinyl flat device is, is giving an equal amount of weight and pressure or you know as well as can be across the whole the whole vinyl uh the surface area of the vinyl you're not you're not putting a bunch of weight in a particular part so the the pressure against the the vinyl the top of the the groove wall uh should be pretty pretty even across and 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 it's not damaging that now have I checked it with a microscope or have I listened to it with, you know, with a real, really, really strong ear or anything like that? No, I haven't done that. But I can tell you that those two records that I had before uh, that I've used this with, they were not playable. I mean, you can't, you can't listen to something when your stylus is bouncing off the groove and finding another spot as it's landing. Unlistenable. Now I can listen to them. So, um... Later on, when I have more experience and more time, I will I will pay a, a closer a closer attention to the results, and then uh, I can report. I'll report back if uh, if I see, if I have any concerns, of course. But I got to tell you, um, the <laughs> the vinyl flat, uh, awesome. I mean, first impressions, uh, man. This thing this thing is going to be a lifesaver. So. Um, if you if you got a stash of records that that you're keeping or you've gotten yourself into a situation where you you have a warp record or two and you really want it flat so you can play it or listen to the music, uh, consider getting one of these. Um, I'll have some information on how to get to the Vinyl Flat website. Uh, it's very simple, vinylflat.com. Um, and and do consider it. Um, if you got any questions, ask me, and and I'll let you know uh, what I know. And then if I don't have an answer, I'll try to uh, get the answer for you. So again, um, you did get to see a little bit of vinyl, and hopefully very soon I'll be back with some more information to tell you about what I was flattening. Um, exciting stuff, but I gotta cross all my T's and dot my eyes and. Yeah, that was said right, right? So, until next time, I will be reporting probably from the record room next time. This is Charity's Art and Craft Room, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.